Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, Glary sent me another package. If you haven't seen my other Glary videos, essentially this is a manufacturer of entry-level guitars that are actually pretty okay. I wouldn't continuously feature their guitars if I didn't think they were decent for the money. They're not custom shop Gibsons or anything, but you know, I always have fun messing around with these things. I really like their Strat. I wasn't as big of a fan of the Burning Fire model. Of course, then there's the infamous ukuleles, but I still have fun playing those things. But this is the last instrument that I thought my viewers would have a little bit of interest in checking out. But I am happy to announce that Glary will be releasing new body styles later this year, so it's probably not the last time we'll hear from these guys. All right, so this time we've got a bass. <laughs> So my plans for this base, you know, after I'm done unboxing it here, is if it's any good, I'm actually just gonna keep it because I don't have a base for myself. And I figure these things, they're about $92 shipped with a base amp. So, hey, why not have one for recording purposes? So inside the package, we have a beautiful looking base right here. They have many different finishes available. This one's kind of like the tobacco sunburst. I wanted the burly wood one, but there's already a few other reviews out there on these bases. So I thought, eh, to be fair to Glary, why don't we review a color that people haven't already seen? So first impressions, this one's a little bit more rough than the other ones. I can see that the bottom strap button, it's almost like the screw isn't completely secure. Like you see, it still moves. Maybe it just needs tightened. We've got kind of the dust all over. Our pickguard plastic, it almost looks like this might have been a return or something because the box was pretty damaged. But, you know, again, 92 bucks, <laughs> you can't really complain. The neck feels really big in comparison to that EB that we reviewed earlier this week. But so far, I'm happy with this. Inside here, it looks like we have our cable to plug into the amp. We have a truss rod adjustment tool as well as the action adjustment. A longtime viewer of the show, his commenting name is Ron, just Ron. He said he purchased one of these, but his neck was bad and he got like a second one sent to him. Um, you guys can't really see this, but this neck is actually really nice and straight, so. No complaints there from me, but again, quality control. I, I can't guarantee that if you buy one of these, it'll be perfect, but Glary is very good about sending you a replacement if you're not happy with it or if shipping damage occurred or something like that. And lastly, since I don't actually have a base amp, I asked them to send me the amp model one. You can buy just the guitar. I think it's like 73 bucks. And for the guitar package, I essentially said, yeah, save your money on the amp. It wasn't really worth it at that point in time. So we'll have to see how this one goes. Let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench, uh, clean it up a little bit, take this plastic off the pick guard and see how it was built. You can see underneath the pick guard, I mean, there's not much going on here. I was a little bit surprised to see that the pickups aren't even attached to this. This is my first precision style base, so I just didn't know that they were drilled directly into the wood there. I don't know if that's how Fender does it, but probably. But here's what our pickup looks like. It's just a very basic pickup. It feels very lightweight. But if you wanted to modify this and put other pickups in here, you definitely have room to do so. Here's what your pots look like. It's just a very simple layout. So the website says this is a basswood body, and then it has a maple neck with what they're claiming is a rosewood fretboard. 
There's quite a few different species of rosewood, so I'm actually kind of surprised to see that, especially when the other ones were advertised as basswood again, even though they look similar to this. But the only thing that I really noticed on this fretboard is there's a little bit of glue right here where the nut was put in. It kind of spilt over. But, you know, once again, I'm impressed with their frets. They're not sharp along the edges, and I've had this base for about a week or two now. So it's definitely held up very well. We have a 1.64 inch nut width, which increases to 2.22 inches at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.98, which then becomes super chunky, 1.06 by the 12th. Glary definitely knows how to make fat necked guitars. Scale length wise, they're going for the Fender 34 inch scale. On the face of the headstock, as always, you have the Glary logo. I'm sure it'd be real easy to remove if you don't like the way it looks. The only thing I'm really going to knock on are these tuners. They, they don't feel very good quality. I mean, watch this. I don't, I don't think tuners are supposed to do that. I mean, this one's not as bad, but this one's pretty bad. So it's just like, you, you got two of them that are really wiggly, two that are more secure. I mean, I think that's just kind of a luck of the draw. We'll have to see if they hold up though. Then right in here is your truss rod should you need to adjust it. Here's what your bridge looks like. You just have it secured by five screws right there. Now the action on mine was just a hair high, so I just used the tool that they provided on these little Allen keys right here. The final verdict on that bottom strap pin, it did tighten up a little bit, but it just keeps turning forever, so I think we need a better screw in there to securely fit that. And there's not too much going on the back here. I will say this is an incredibly neck heavy guitar. I can already tell because the very light basswood body. I don't think it really pairs well with this particular maple neck. So you'll definitely need a grippy strap or maybe even attach a weight to the bottom of it if you ever need to take your hand away. Kind of hard to see, but there are some scratches and light imperfections in the wood here. And again, it's a, a quite a beefy maple neck here got some indentations right there. There's also a few light marks around the edges of the fretboard. I kind of wish they would have made those side marker inlays just a little bit larger. But other than a few stray marks, I mean the neck was straight. Uh, the action just needed a little bit of dialing in. For the 90 bucks, I think it's going to work okay. This one's so neck heavy that I can't really get an accurate weight. So we're going to say around like six and a half pounds because I'm holding it up here just to level it out. So I'm going to go ahead and mic up the provided amp with this bundle and then we'll also run it through my audio interface. <laughs>
All right, so what are my final thoughts of this thing? The neck dive is insane on this beast. Uh, the only way I could actually get this to sit like this, you know, so you can actually play it and you don't have to just be holding it up yourself, is this is a little trick I always do. When I say attach a weight, I literally just take this little Epiphone amp and I wrap it around my strap and then that adds just the perfect amount of weight for it to sit where it needs to be. It's a little bit goofy. I wouldn't suggest doing that for stage use, but hey, it works if you're just at home. So that means, Glary, maybe make the body out of something other than basswood because basswood's fairly light. Maybe get something a little bit heavier that even if it means costing a little bit more, I think more people would want to purchase your basses and be happier with them. I was actually really surprised by these tuners. They did hold tune fairly well, despite being loose when the strings were off of them. And I mean, the action was okay. You got a little bit of fret buzz while you were playing and the tone, it was rather bright which is completely the opposite of that EB3. I found it funny, people in the comment section of that one, they were asking me, okay, that's nice, but where's the clean tones? Those were the clean tones. I didn't use any fuzz, that was just directly in. That thing is just a, a beefy monster. But this one, you know, it's the exact opposite. It's got a nice bright punchy tone. Making use of your tone control also dials that down a bit. I demoed them from zero to 10, but I honestly like the five setting as well. The only other thing I wanna mention is it appears the instrument is not grounded properly. Now, I don't know if I messed something up when I took the pick guard off. Maybe one of the solder joints came undone. I don't really know. So I can't necessarily fault them with that. But you can see when you take your hands off the strings, there is a buzz. But it didn't really bug me that much while playing, but I've had to deal with that on a bunch of different bases like the one I got on Trade Tuesday. So as far as the bass goes, I mean, it seems to sound pretty good. It plays all right. I mean, for the price point, I think it's perfect for somebody who has low investment and wants to start out. But as with all these other Glaries, if you have a higher budget, there's definitely better things out there. But I would definitely suggest these more so for adults because, I mean, this is a big, chunky neck. I could not imagine a kid trying to learn bass on this thing. But at the same time, if it wasn't chunky, it would probably cause the neck to bow. So we're talking like a solid 7 out of 10 rating. And the bass amp with this one, I liked it better than the guitar amp, but it's probably just because I'm not well versed with bass amps. I don't even have a proper bass amp to run it through. It's a very thin amp, so it doesn't really, you know, shake your whole house, but you know, that might be a good thing too. What's nice is you also have a headphone jack right there. You can even put your MP3 in here to listen to music. But something I was surprised and kind of upset is they don't have the grind setting like they do on the guitar amp. That basically gives you this overdrive tone. I mean, it wasn't too good in that amp, but this only has clean options. You can't distort it at all. And that's, you know, some of the fun is having the fuzz with the bass. So maybe that's something Glary could do on future iterations. So is this set worth 92 bucks? Yeah, I'd say it's worth that much. I mean, anything more than 100 bucks, yeah, maybe not but I think Glary has done it once again. They've created a guitar within a certain price range and they can ship it to your door for under a hundred bucks, which I still don't quite fully understand. So if you're interested in buying a Glary brand product, I will leave a channel supporting link in the description, but if not, hey, at least we got to take a look at a cheap base and who knows what I might use this for in the future. All right, thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.